Uh, hello, good morning, good evening, wherever you are. I'm sure we all wish to be together in South Africa right now. And thank you for giving me this opportunity to give this speech. I'm so excited to talk about wordnets and linguistic ontologies. For those who doesn't know me, I am a professor of computer science at Pierzet University in Palestine. I have been working in natural language processing, ontology engineering, and semantic web uh, over 20 years by now. This is me, uh, as most of my research is uh, in the past 10 years, is focused on building linguistic resources. And this is a picture of uh, the beautiful campus of Pierzet University. And by the way, Pierzet, uh, in Arabic means a will of olive oil uh, because the area is uh, very famous uh, with uh, the high quality of olive oil. In addition to olive oil also, we try to play an active role in building linguistic resources. Uh, the main linguistic resources we built so far are lexographic database, uh, which includes about 150 lexicons that we have been digitizing and cleaning and integrating uh, over the past 10 years. I believe now it's the biggest uh, 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 lexicographic database uh, for Arabic. And uh, it includes the classical lexicons, thesauri, uh, glossaries, bi and trilingual uh, dictionaries, and many others, and in, almost in all domains. Also, we have, we are building the Arabic ontology, which is a formal Arabic word net, I will, which I will show you today. All concepts, by the way, in this ontology are mapped to Princeton word net, to Dochi, to the PFO, and to the uh, Wikidata knowledge graph, in addition to uh, other uh, lexicons. We also have several uh, dialect corpora annotated with many morphological features and linked with the other uh, lexical uh, resources. And the three together, uh, the three types of resources together are forming big linguistic data graph, which is available in the, in, over this link. Okay, uh, so in this talk, I will discuss three things. First, I will discuss why do we need linguistic ontologies? Then I will discuss some foundational differences between WebNet, linguistic ontology, and application ontology. And in the uh, last uh, or the third part of the talk, I will uh, show you the Arabic ontology, which is a linguistic ontology. Uh, we know where bits uh, are widely used in natural language processing and information retrieval for enhancing the retrieval of unstructured information. But there are new types, uh, new types of applications with new demands to use word needs as ontologies for managing structured data, like in knowledge graphs, big data, and other applications. In fact, I found about 5,000 articles recently mentioning WebNet and uh, knowledge graphs. This is despite the fact that knowledge graphs actually are uh, or is a new research area. So there is a big import, uh, uh, demand. As you see here uh, in this small knowledge graph, uh, Steve Jobs, for example, is a person, uh, inventor of iPhone, uh, former CEO of Apple, uh, etc. These green links are links between instances or relations between instances and the knowledge graph. But as you see in these yellow boxes here, we have think, person, university, place, date, etc which are types of entities. 
and which graphs share and use. Not only one graph, maybe other graphs share the same thing. So the issue here is that people want to use WebNet, uh, WebNet senses uh, as classes of things, similar to ontology classes. However, as we know, ontologies are typically rich uh, uh, axiomatizations and they are application specific, while word needs are general purpose lexicons. And if we try to axiomatize word needs, they become really rigid. So the question is, that I will discuss with you today is how to build linguistic ontology to better serve a new types of applications. So in this second part of the talk, I will show you uh, uh, the foundational differences between word needs and ontologies. Let's first examine uh, since it uh, versus concept. And what's the difference between them? As you see here, there's a small uh, piece of word net uh, and we know that WebNet is made of senses, and uh, uh, or a sense it is a linguistic concept, or signifies a linguistic concept. And the linguistic concept is a thought in our mind. And even in linguistics, we know that even individuals are seen as uh, uh, concepts. While on the other side, uh, an ontology is made of concepts, as, but the notion of concept here means classes of individuals. This means that uh, concepts that do not have individuals cannot be part of the ontology, but they can be part of it. So since it's are not the same as concepts, as I will show you later, uh, in the Arabic ontology, I define a, co a concept in the intentional sense, with intentional interpretation, uh, following Nicola Guarino's uh, definition of a conceptualization, and which refers to uh, the seat of maximal state of affairs, which I believe uh, this definition is more suitable for knowledge graphs. Second, let's examine uh, hyponomy and subsumption. So hyponomy between two senses in WebNet is added if native speakers accept a sentence like B is a kind of A, while an ontology, it is a subset relationship. This is of course because ontology concepts are sets of individuals. So we have two sets of individuals and the subsumption means subset. Thus, uh, for ontology, we say every instance, for example, of a table is also an instance of furniture in all possible uh, state of affairs or all, all possible worlds. Third, let's see synonymy. So synonymy uh, in WebNet, if two if we can substitute two words in a linguistic context by one with the other without altering the truth value, then the two words are synonyms. But if you see in the ontology, synonymy is actually not really defined. Synonymy or synonyms are generally seen as alternative labels or names of concepts. Uh, in the Arabic ontology, I define synonymy, uh, synonymy relationship as equivalence class, and therefore it is uh, uh, reflexive, symmetric, and transitive relation. In other words, if we have two concepts with different terms, uh, these terms are considered synonyms if, and only if, both concepts have the same extension, the same set of individuals. So what I want to say is that when building word nets, we think of linguistic contexts. Why, when we build ontologies, we think of classes and relations between 
instances. And because of these uh, different views, there are some consequences that I will show you uh, shortly. So now I will show you some of these consequences or issues that are, from an ontology point of view, might not be correct, but they might be acceptable if wordnet is seen as a lexicon. This is an example of a relation uh, in WordNet where we have no benefits uh, in including it uh, as it is implied relation and can be derived from other relations. So if we say that uh, reflate is, a, is an inflate and inflate is a change, we don't need to say that reflate is a change because this is an implied and can be a derived relation. This is another case where we have uh, a morning star and evening star as two different senses or concepts in WordNet. This might be indeed different uh, linguistic concepts, but ontologically it is the same instance that we will see at the same time, at different time. Uh, so if you see me in the morning, and if you see me in the evening, I'm still the same individual. So it's Venus. So that we will see in the morning or in the evening. So should we consider it the same instance or not? From an ontology point of view, it is the same instance. Uh, while in wordnets, uh, in wordnets uh, it's considered uh, as different uh, concepts. This, is, this case is important, uh, which is related to verbs and their verbal nouns. So verbs are linguistic rather than uh, ontological categories. Look at this uh, sense of the verb learn, uh, which means gain knowledge or skills. And the, uh, the learning, uh, and this uh, sense, the noun sense of learning, uh, refers to the cognitive process of acquiring skills or knowledge. Actually, both refer to the same, e e the same event of learning. So if we say he learns, he learned, he's learning, the learning he gained, blah, 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 we actually refer to the exact same event of learning. Uh, ontologies capture events that verbs denote, but not verbs themselves. And I will, as I will show you later in the Arabic ontology, it does not contain verbs at all. There are no verb senses. Instead, we added the verbal nouns that are linked with verbs, but linked at the language level, not at the uh, not within, inside the ontology. Uh, okay. Now, another case, another issue that's related to the, uh, to the accuracy of the content. So in this sense, it, Im uh, imaginary and complex numbers are seen as synonyms. Why in mathematics, an imaginary number is only a special case of a complex number. So actually this brings us to think about how to benchmark the accuracy of what we have, of our content. Should it be uh, according to speakers or uh, according to mathematics? And if it's to speakers, then uh, uh, how to know what speakers actually believe and, uh, and whether what they believe is, is actually correct or not. Uh, okay, so this is another case. Oh, I have another case related to accuracy, sorry. Uh, and, and, and how. Uh, we should benchmark, we should benchmark the accuracy. In this case, I show you uh, a sense uh, uh, that have Islamic calendar month 
that is a month. And the month here is defined as one of the 12 divisions of the calendar year. And the calendar year is a Gregorian year. And this is different from the uh, lunar year. So it's not really the content, the, the accuracy is not, uh, let me just change the, this, yeah. Uh, okay, so in this slide, I list the major differences between application ontologies and uh, linguistic ontologies. So what, uh, what is the difference between both? So, and these, these differences are important to be aware uh, when we build linguistic ontologies that can play the role of awareness. So I'm sorry, when, when I refer to linguistic ontologies, I mean that can play the role of awareness, which, which are different from application ontologies. So application ontologies are typically rich axiomatizations, while linguistic ontologies are typically, should be lightweight. Otherwise, they become too rigid for the language. Uh, also, polysemy is not uh, a problem in application uh, ontologies because people can invent the, uh, uh, labels to their classes as they like, while this is uh, not possible for uh, linguistic ontologies and their needs, and polysemy is important to care about. Uh, similarly, also, synonymy is not a target for application ontologies, while it's important for linguistic ontologies. And more importantly is how knowledge is benchmarked. So for application ontologies, the knowledge is benchmarked to applications knowledge. Uh, because when we build application ontology, we have a certain application that will use it or a class of applications. While when we build a linguistic ontologies and word needs, so this is this should be benchmarked to general knowledge because we have we don't have application requirements at hand to think about when we build them. So they are for general purpose. Okay, now allow me to move to the third part of the talk to present you the Arabic ontology, which is being developed at Birzeit University. Uh, so we can define the Arabic ontology as a lightweight formal specification of the concepts that the Arabic terms convey. In other words, it is a formal Arabic word net. So it's, an, it's a word net, it's an Arabic word net. Uh, and all concepts uh, in this ontology are mapped or linked with senses in, in the Princeton word net and with nodes in the Wikidata knowledge graph. Uh, as well as we have mapping correspondences to uh, other concepts in BFO and in Dochi, and also uh, with many uh, of the lexicons we have. Uh, our progress so far, I really hate to talk about uh, numbers because the numbers keep changing uh, because we are working on the, on the ontology. Uh, so, but we have about 1,800 uh, concepts that are fully done. Uh, most of them at the top level. Uh, also, we have about 17,000 uh, uh, concepts that are partially done. Um, partially done means uh, that they are still subject to change. But we show them in the portal and the ontology. But when we show them, we show them with this gray, orange lines here. These the gray lines means it's it's among from the thousand eight hundred. As you see also in the, in the ontology, we have some English labels uh, for some concepts, especially at the top level. But this is, providing English is not our target actually. They are just for communication and uh, readability. Uh, 
So the methodology we followed to build this ontology is top down and bottom up at the same time. Maybe it's called middle out. Oh, I don't know, but we build first the top level uh, concepts, uh, which took us a uh, long time. Then uh, we see, then we search or we identify the concepts from the lexicons we have. We link them with the top level and we keep revising and changing. Maybe sometimes require uh, a major change or re rewrite uh, until uh, all is done. And the ontology, this is the link to the uh, ontology. Uh, the, this is the a depiction of only the top three levels of the uh, ontology, but the full description can be found on, on this paper, which uh, appeared recently in the Applied Ontology Journal, and which shows that these concepts, how they are mapped to BFO and to Doge. Let me switch to uh, show you a demo of the ontology. This is our ontology portal, which is a lexicographic search engine that contains the, the ontology, the Arabic ontology, and uh, 150 lexicons. And by the way, some of the lexicons are really uh, big. So we can search directly or there is a link to the ontology tree. So if we search, for example, time, and we see the results coming from the lexicons and the uh, ontology. So the, the, these are coming from the lexicons. Uh, and th this is the results from the ontology. Uh, if I go back to show you to browse the ontology for you, this is the root node, which is entity, and entity is divided into objects, occurrence, dependent entities, abstracts, information, and we can expand to see uh, other levels like object is a physical object or social object. Uh, physical object is uh, divided into several uh, categories, and uh, one can keep uh, uh, expanding the tree. Uh, I just want to show you that this is the uh, senset. This is the senset, uh, the Arabic words and the English words, which are divided uh, by this part. This is the English gloss, the Arabic gloss. There is an example here in Arabic. Uh, this is the concept ID. This is what we call concept profile. So if you click you see this is uh, this concept of profile uh, for uh, ob for object which contains uh, some formalisms, uh, sometimes mappings to other uh, to external resources, identity criteria, rigidity, example of instances, etc. And uh, we have also relations sometimes. So this is a physical object that has some relations or some parts uh, with other concepts and so on. So this is like generally uh, either we browse or you can, by the way, you can also uh, search for example, virus and you get it directly in the ontology tab. So we have three tabs here. Uh, you get it directly from the, uh, in the ontology tab. Uh, okay, let me go back. To the, by the way, uh, more about this is actually uh, can be found on the about page. We have also some uh, frequently asked questions, etc. Uh, let me go back to the slides. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, now I just want to show you that uh, there are some major questions and design issues that we faced at the beginning. So these, the basic questions were, what semantics should the ontology capture and adhere to? How to benchmark the correctness of the uh, ontology content? Uh, 
there are some options and other questions also. For example, should concepts uh, uh, in the ontology uh, be defined or classified based on the Arabic speakers? Arabic speakers believe. Should we adopt a certain lexicon and formalize it so that the ontology adheres to this lexicon? Should we rely on what the scientific literature accepts, like in mathematics, biology, etc.? Should we build the ontology based on what we, as the ontology builders, believe? So it would be like Birzet's ontology. Uh, so uh, this is what we decided. So our, we bunch, uh, our benchmarking methodology consists of three, of three uh, levels of preferences. Uh, these are three levels, so we say first, we try to adhere to scientific knowledge, to scientific knowledge. Uh, for example, when we classify stars, planets, satellites, etc., then the correctness of our classification is benchmarked against advances in astronomy. When we classify organisms, we try to rely on biology, etc. For example, what is a virus? A virus is not an organism in the Arabic ontology like other lexicons, because science or, or biology uh, does not cl classify it as, does not consider it even as, a, as an organism. When defining uh, for example, types of states and government systems, which science does not define, then we rely on how, uh, on law and uh, political sciences. In cases where neither science nor subject matter experts knowledge uh, can help us, uh, for example, when we classify uh, types of hate, types of love, etc. we had uh, to investigate uh, and rely on common sense knowledge that can be found in some good lexicons and maybe some appropriate uh, literature. literature. Uh, so three types of preferences. Now, I will, uh, okay, so, how do we formalize glosses? This is a gloss, as you see. So a gloss is used to define a concept in an informal but controlled way. Uh, first, a, 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 a gloss should start with a supertype that we are defining. For example, if we define a gloss object, so the, it should start with entity. See here, entity, because the supertype is entity. Or if we say we have to define physical object, we, it starts with an object there. Okay, second, we list uh, the most distinguishing characteristics that specialize this concept from its supertype and also from uh, concepts in the same level. And third, the uh, distinguishing characteristics are written in, in, in the form of a sequence of propositions. Okay, so uh, this is about the evaluation of the comprehensiveness of the ontology content, which was not an easy task. So we need to know how much is the current version of the ontology is able to top any concept in Arabic. We are evaluating the ability of topping concepts, uh, not how much uh, concepts we have. So this is important, uh, they, they are different. So to do this, we did an experiment by classifying uh, 1,830 terms of concepts that we found in uh, El Jirjani uh, lexicon which is an old lexicon and contains 
uh, the most abstract notions in Arabic and in many domains. We excluded some because we didn't understand. So we would like to know if each of these concepts can have a place in the ontology. So this means that ideally, each of the 1,830 concepts is placed as equivalent to or as a leaf node in the ontology. Uh, this is uh, the results here uh, shown in the figure. So the blue numbers uh, are the number of concepts that are mapped as equivalent. So for example, the two uh, means that uh, there are two concepts in you know, algebraic definitions that are equivalent to all, which is good, which is, yeah, there is no problem here. This is okay. The green numbers, like 107 here, means that we have 107 concepts that are under information entity, but we cannot place them under information object or information realization. This means that we need to extend or revise the, this label under information entity where uh, other concepts uh, that can be placed. Uh, so, if all green numbers, if all, so forget the, the blue numbers because they are equivalent, which means we have them. For the green numbers, if all of them are at the leaf nodes, then it would be perfect. Otherwise, there, uh, 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 if not, if not under the leaf nodes, it means that some revision is needed. In total, we have about 90% uh, of the uh, concepts we used in the experiment are correctly placed on the ontology, and 10% uh, are not, uh, which means we need to work on uh, uh, and revise some of the levels. I will not spend time, uh, I will not spend much time here. Uh, but I would just would like to say that the uh, data representation or the ontology model, the data model of the ontology is similar to where needs model. In addition, we included some uh, the area, uh, era uh, in which the sense is used, the lexical type, whether uh, it is a technical sense, a classical, a classical Arabic, uh, modern standard Arabic, dialect term, etc. Uh, this is about uh, URLs design. This is an important issue which I believe lexographers uh, may not uh, care about, and which is related uh, to uh, uh, how, uh, how concepts are identified. So uh, in the Arabic ontology, each concept is given a globally unique URL, or we get Peter say URI. And also each, uh, uh, each semantic relation is also given uh, uh, a URL. Okay, as I told you uh, earlier, we have a huge uh, lexicographic database, which includes many types of lexicons, thesaurus, glossaries, etc., and that we are currently trying to link each lexical concept in, in a lexicon with the ontology concepts. Uh, we use this uh, mapping framework that we developed. So the idea is that by mapping all lexicons with the ontology, it means that all lexicons will be semantically linked with each other. So far, we have all about 13,000 markers. Um, okay, the ontology and the lexicons we have are all represented uh, using these two main standards the uh, W3C is best practices for publishing linked data and the, uh, and the lemon model. Because following these two standards is not only important in order to be compatible with external uh, resources and to be part of uh, the linguistic uh, linked open data, but 
uh, uh, they are also important to enable linking with knowledge graphs. Because many graphs will be using the, the ontology. Okay, uh, to sum up, I would like to stress the following points. Uh, first, we have a new demand uh, of using wordnets for managing structured data, like knowledge graphs. And this is an important area. Uh, there are some issues that we need to consider when reusing wordnets as on linguistic ontologies. And uh, the Arabic ontology is an example of a linguistic ontology that can play the role of a wordnet and an ontology at the same time. Last but not least, I believe there are some standards that are important to follow in digital uh, lexicography when developing wordnets. Uh, this is the end of my talk. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, I'm happy to receive your questions uh, directly or uh, later by email. Also, please don't hesitate to email me if you need the ontology or some uh, resources. And about my slides, I will post them on my web page. Thank you very much.